You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne. And in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. Now, if you're a coach, a consultant or a service-based business owner and you're really tired of being told to do this or that, you know, implementing someone else's method, all of the steps, and then still finding that it's really, really hard to attract the right clients. You know, you're not hitting your profit goals, you're miles away from it, and it's all just feeling super time consuming and hard work. And maybe you just don't even like what they've told you to do. Like maybe they've said, go and cold DM people who you find on Instagram and you are just not in the energetic space of the cold DM, well, guess what? This just means that instead of following someone's method, which has worked for them, it's actually about defining your core strategy that underpins these methods that you might use and actually makes any method you choose successful. So you can choose the ones that you like the best. Imagine that. You don't have to do those cold DMs at all. In fact, I highly recommend not doing it. You can choose whatever works for you and also knowing how to choose the right thing so that you've got a flow with no gaps, with no breaks in the journey where people are just dropping through that hole and never making it through to the end. Well, yes, there is a way to do that, right? This is called a strategic framework where you've got the pieces And there's a way that you put it together, you connect these pieces so that there is flow in your business, so there's alignment with you and alignment with your goals. And this framework I've developed is called the Jam Plan. I offer it to you inside Business Jam, which is my program. Now, this is a coaching program with online content, with live coaching, with training, and with a beautiful, supportive community, which I think is so important that you're not with all this information and figuring it out on your own and feeling like, well, am I doing it right? Am I not doing it right? What is going on? Actually having other people who are there with you, who have similar businesses, who can be your cheer squad, who can give you that support, motivation, and actually also give you some real good feedback as well, as well as getting advice and coaching, of course, from me in the program. Now that's all waiting for you inside Business Jam. The doors currently, right this moment, are closed. However, they will be open again and sooner than you really know, um, they'll be coming up really soon. So get your name on the wait list now. Now I have a priority wait list and this priority wait list is for those who think, I really wanna be first. I like to be first in line. I like to get the best seats. I like to have all of the best things, you know, the VIP room at the club with the champagne and the canapes. I like that kind of treatment. Well, if that's you, get your name on the priority wait list, please. And you will be first in line. You'll be first to know. There will be some extra things coming your way that the people who are in the main line won't know about. So get your name on the priority wait list. You will be first to hear about Business Jam when it's open next and to be the first ones are able to take that step forward and and come into my inner circle and really think about, you know, well, it might not be right for you, but you'll be able to make that choice because you'll be there, you'll be hearing about it before anybody else. So no obligation, of course, you can just put your name on the list. You can still decide at the time whether it's right for you, whether you want to join or not. But by putting your name on the list, it means that you're obviously going to be first in, best dressed, if you decide to take that step forward. So head over to jessicaosborne.com slash business jam waitlist and get your name on the list. I've dropped that link as well below for you in the show notes. 
you can go ahead and click on that and get your name on the list right now. And I, yeah, look out for the first goodies that come your way as the VIPs on my priority list. Welcome back to She's the Business podcast. Uh, so glad to have you with me today. I'm actually recording this episode from my house. Yay, we are back. We're back on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland, Australia, and we are loving having our house back, having some space, um, each of us having a bit of room. And yes, I have my office, which is fantastic. And it doesn't even matter that I am at the moment sharing it with my daughter as her uh, second bedroom, just because we have uh, some guests coming and we are we kicked her out of her bedroom for the guests. Anyway, I digress. Today, what I wanted to talk to you about is something that, you know, I've just, I really became aware of a couple of weeks ago. I wrote some notes down on my phone. I thought I have to do an episode on this because it's so, so important. And a lot of people don't really know or understand this. And so I just see so many frustrated people bashing their head against the wall with their marketing, doing what they think that they should be doing, doing what they've been told is right or or even what they have been doing previously and asking, well, why isn't it working? Why is it suddenly feeling so hard? You know, is it because people don't like my stuff? Am I too expensive? Are there too many other people out there? All of those things, all external. But look, the landscape has changed. Marketing has changed. And the reason why marketing has changed is because we have changed. We as people have changed a huge amount over the last three to four years. Um, this change probably started happening about five years ago and it's accelerated in a huge proportion. I've really noticed a massive, massive difference myself in how people are consuming content, how we're making purchasing and buying decisions. And that means, of course, the way that we market to people has to be different now than what it used to be. It used to be, you know, we're a very different type of purchasing decision. There was a lot less on offer to begin with. So it was like, hey, I need one of these. Here is one of the things. Does it meet my criteria? Does it have A, B, C, D? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, done. You know, that was really a lot of decisions were made based on, is this logical? Does it make sense? And it was very mechanical, I think, in the way that we used to think about things. So people would look at price, they would look at, you know, all of those things and go with the best choice based on that. What people are doing now, we have abundant choice, is they've started to realize, hey, just because it's cheapest, that doesn't necessarily mean it was the best option for me. We've all had those experiences, right, where we've purchased something, a service, a product, whatever it is, you know, I'm talking like really high level in terms of marketing and people right now. But we've all had those experiences where we have, you know, chosen an option because of the price and then absolutely regretted it later on thinking, well, why was I even worrying about that small amount difference? I should have gone with the one that was a higher price because they're a better fit for me. And I wouldn't have wasted so much time with all of the background um, you know, coaching, telling them things, checking things, finding all the mistakes. And, you know, gosh, the number of times I've ended up feeling like I'm the one providing the service because I'm doing all the checking and all of everything that's going on. And what am I actually paying these people for? You know, it can get super frustrating, right? So we've grown up as people, as society, we have changed and we've grown up, we've learned our lessons, we've become far more sophisticated far more aware of what happens when we don't go with our gut instinct, when we try to make the logical choice, when we try to make the best choice um, and overthink it and maybe, you know, be a bit more spreadsheety and mechanical about it. Now, I'm not saying that it's not important to do that at times. Of course it is. But at the end of the day, what people are doing 100% across the board is people are using their intuition so much more. They're making decisions based on who they feel is an absolute best choice for them, being that they're the best fit. This person really gets it. They've done this before. They work with this exact type of company exactly like mine. 
They're somebody who I relate to. I understand them. They're going to understand me. You know, it is so much more the softer elements and the reasons why we're making these decisions, much more so than the traditional choices of, you know, what's included in the package, how much am I getting and what am I getting for that money? We're, we're not. And it's been proven time and time again. I've tried this in my own business and absolutely 100%. I see now that I'm so clear on who I want to work with, the type of people who are actually coming up and booking calls with me tend to be a 99 to 100% match for my ideal client. And that so far this year, I've got had a you know, only one sales call that has not purchased. So I'm having a huge success rate in terms of those conversions. And that's because it's the right people in the first place. It's the right fit, right? We're already on the right page together. Now, what I see and what I'm seeing out there, and I guess the reason why I wanted to bring this episode to you is a lot of people just thinking, well, I'm going to bypass all of this, you know, piece of really getting clear on who that right person is. I've got a service. I know I can help heaps of people. So I'm just going to go out there and just find people. And what they do is what I'd call a surface level degree of targeting where they say, right, well, I am going to target coaches. Now I'm going to talk about this from a customer perspective now because because I have a profile that says I'm a coach then I get approached by all of these companies who work with coaches and here is their first mistake that they make they are targeting coaches so they put coaches as a big name on a bucket and said everybody in this bucket is a potential client of ours they've gone no further into understanding well, who in this bucket of coaches would be the right client? So that's their first mistake. And why is it such a mistake? Like because they are spending so much time and energy targeting all of these people who are coaches and a huge proportion of them are never, ever going to be the client for them. They're not the right client in the first place. So why are you even bothering? Like, let's take a few extra minutes, do a little bit more profiling, actually get really clear on who the right coaches are what makes them the right fit for you? It's far more than the title on their profile that makes them a good fit. Not all coaches are at the same stage in their business. Not all coaches have the same problems. Not all coaches have the same expertise, experience, or anything, or same level of success right now. And I can't tell you from a, well, you probably can relate because I'm sure you get these messages as well, but gosh, it is so offensive, I think I'd say. It's offensive to get messages from complete random strangers who are targeting you simply because you're a coach and assuming that you have these blanket problems that they've identified for an entire industry. Now, I know that that's what they're doing. So I have to take myself out of it and go, well, they don't know that I don't have those problems and that I'm not in the boat. But seriously, you send someone a message and you're trying to get a client and you're just telling them, you've got these problems and I can help you. Eh. Okay, let's just stop right there. How likely do you think someone is going to respond? Even if you do have that problem, it's kind of a little bit confronting and it is really pretty rude actually to just pop into someone's face without starting a conversation in any other way, without them telling you that they have a problem and to tell them that they have a problem. Like, would you walk up to someone on the street or in a mall somewhere and say, hey, by the way, did you know that you've got a really big problem? Like they would potentially punch you in the face, wouldn't they? (laughs) Especially if you were saying something that's quite personal. That is not a great way to start off any kind of business relationship. And that's why it's like, it's so important to understand right now how much marketing has changed, but that it's so, so easy to be talking to the right people to begin with. So imagine the difference. But then going to, you know, having all of the coaches. So you get all of the coaches in the whole industry together in a room and talking to them all as one, as if they're all the same. Then having some specific breakout rooms where you're talking about specific problems or things that they have, interests that they have. You know, maybe some people are interested in video and lead generation, really want to get that side of the business going. Someone else is really interested in working on their team and other ways to actually generate the more more capacity to be able to bring on more clients. There are so many different ways to grow your business and it might not even be that. It might be something else completely. It might be 
figuring out what your signature program is and how to structure it in a way that you can then scale it. Now, imagine you had those breakout rooms and you've invited all of the coaches to select the room that they want to be in. Well, suddenly you've got an audience of people who have put up their hand and said, I'm interested in this. Now you're talking to people who already have an interest. They've already got a desire for what it is. And yes, there is still going to be an element of, are you the right fit for them? Uh, do you have, you know, connected values? Do they even like you? Do you have a good emotional and personality fit? Because if you don't, then they're just not going to sign up. This is the way that you can you know, start thinking about your own marketing. How can you get your audience into more specific places? So instead of talking to a big, broad bucket of people, a broad industry, something that's like, oh, anyone who has a small business, well, gosh, there's a zillion different small businesses. They've all got different problems going on, and most of them are not going to be your ideal client right now. So get more specific. Get more specific. Think about how you can do that, because when you're having a more engaged, relevant conversation with people, it has so much more potential to turn into actual business. And it's actually far less effort on your part. The biggest amount of effort is always in the execution. So these people who are sending out cold emails or DMs, I'll put them in the same box, they're, they're sending one-to-one -one messages to hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people who are never, ever going to be the right fit for them, simply because they haven't taken the time to get super clear on who it is that they really should be speaking to, who are the right clients. Now, you might be thinking, how do I do that? What is it I need to know about them? How do I define and decide who is the right client? And this is really, a, a, again, another shift. Back in the old days when I did marketing for big brands and corporates, you know, when we did our customer segmentation and avatars, it was very much surface level stuff you could see. So, you know, what sort of income bracket are they in? Uh, demographics, where do they live? All of that kind of really high level stuff. Now, you and I both know that even if you do that, you could have two families, both in the same income bracket, in the same street, living next door to each other. We're totally 100% different. Okay. They have a different way of viewing life. They've got different objectives, different goals, different things that they think are important, uh, different desires. So they're not both going to be your same ideal client. But back in that old way of doing your demographic profiling, they would have both been in your bucket. So how do you get to this next level? Well, actually thinking about what is going on inside, not what you can see as the external person, but what's happening inside your ideal client. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What are they actually doing as well? Um, really interesting. And there's a whole bunch of questions that I have created to help you profile this on a level that you're going to be able to segment out of your big bucket the ones who are in the right space, who actually want the outcome that you provide. They're thinking about it in the right way. They have that desire. They're aligned in their goals. You know, and they, they have the feeling. You, you know how they feel about it, right? So you can speak to them on a level that means you're not just turning up like a crazy jack-in-the-box in the inbox going blah, 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 speaking at them and then thinking, I don't know who you are or what this is about or why you're even emailing me because I never said I wanted something. Let's stop doing that. Let's actually have much, much better, more uh, sophisticated marketing to match our more sophisticated buyer. Because guess what those sophisticated buyers are doing? Every time someone goes into their inbox who's uninvited, and it's just in there saying, I can help you. I've got a, I've created a video for you on how I can help you. Oh, well, I don't even know who you are. Like, are you the guy from the takeaway shop down the road? Or are you someone like, I don't know. Why would I even listen to you? Zero credibility. So guess what happens? Delete, block, you know, and it's happening across the board. So, so much time is being wasted by having a non-targeted approach and really being unsophisticated in your marketing. So it's so easy to get into a sophisticated place. And I put a whole lot of questions. You know, this is what I do, obviously, with my clients inside my program, Business Jam. You know, I get them to slow down and spend this time up front, right at the beginning, on let's get super, super clear on who it is that is your ideal client. Part of that might be a little bit of introspection on yourself to know, well, what is my ideal niche? What is it? that I do 
<laughs> what is it that I want to be out there as, known as, be doing in my business? Because part of that also helps you define who's the right client for you, right? You know, if you sell wheelchairs, then somebody who's fully able-bodied and can walk on two legs is not going to be your ideal client. So you need to also get clear on you, yourself, and what it is that you want to offer in order to discover this. But when we get into the who, it's going so much be- deeper below the surface than what you were potentially going before. And I generally find it doesn't matter how long someone's been in business, uh, whether they have been doing marketing as well all their life. I've got many clients in Business Jam who are marketers who have almost as much or as much experience as I do. They've been in business, been in corporate. They've done all of this stuff before many times, but it's the process that we go through, the questions that I've asked that help them to get clarity, help them to get clear and go to the level of specificity in who it is that they're targeting that they suddenly feel so much more confident, so much more clear and have a different voice and they can get out there and talk directly to the right people. Everybody else just walks on by because they're not drawn into that content and you don't actually want them anyway. You want to be drawing in the people who are right for you. Now, if you want to get these questions, um, you can do a bit of a DIY because I've put them together in a handy download, which is my customer avatar download. I I think I've called it my ultimate customer avatar, customer profiling sheet, but it is not anything like your usual customer avatar. This is not about you know, how old they are and whether they're a man or a woman. Those sort of things are, you know, just tick the first boxes. Then we get really, really deep and personal with your ideal customer and help you to step into their shoes, to really feel them from on that personal level because that's honestly the only thing that's going to help you be sophisticated in your marketing and actually make real connections. So you can grab that right now um, from my website. If you want to go there and download it, you can download that worksheet, go through the questions yourself and get going on it. Now, of course, it always helps to be able to work through this with somebody else. And you know that is something that we do inside Business Champ, which is not open right now, but you can jump on the wait list if you wanted to hear about it the next time that I open it later on this year. Um, And that's really it from me today. So I hope that you took away something new and and really important for your business from this episode. Um, I'd love to see what your biggest takeaway was. So if you'd like to share it with me, you know, post a screenshot of this episode onto your stories and let me know what your takeaways were, what you loved about this episode, because I'm always keen to hear from my audience. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in today and I will talk to you next week. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of She's a Business Podcast. I hope that you've been enjoying it as much as I have in creating the content to bring to you. So I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate your presence and your attention. Now, if you love the podcast or maybe you just loved today's episode, then I would absolutely appreciate it if you would go to Apple Podcasts, um, scroll down, hit the five stars, and then leave me a short review about what it was that you really enjoyed in this episode, or maybe in the podcast overall. And when I receive those reviews, then I love to give those reviewers a shout out on my future podcast episodes. So you never know, you may hear your name getting a shout out in a future episode if you do that. So thank you once again for your time and I'll see you next time on She's the Business.